A piece of zinc is placed in a test tube containing acidified MnO4 minus. After some time, it is found that a redox reaction has taken place. Use the table of standard reduction potentials to answer the following questions. Write down the name or formula of the reducing agent. On your table of standard reduction potentials, you have your reducing agents on the right and your oxidizing agents on the left. It should be easy to see that the reducing agent is zinc. Why are we saying that the reducing agent is zinc? That is the question in 8.1.2. So let's go ahead and address that. When we look at zinc 2 plus and MnO4 minus, MnO4 minus is a stronger oxidizing agent. So it will undergo a reduction. Meaning that zinc, on the other hand, the piece which is on the right hand side, is our stronger reducing agent. It is going to undergo oxidation to form zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. That is 8.1.2. Let's take a look at 8.2 and 8.2.1. So we have a standard electrochemical cell and the first question is to write the function of component Y. Component Y is a salt bridge. There's a few things that a salt bridge does for an electrochemical cell. One, it completes the circuit. It also provides a path for movement of ions. That is just some of the functions of component Y, a salt bridge. 8.2.2 in which directions will electrons flow in the external circuit choose from ni to mi mi to ni it means that now we need to determine whether ni or mn is the anode or the cathode we have to go back to our table of reduction potentials mn is a stronger reducing agent so this is where oxidation takes place and we know that oxidation takes place at the anode while on the other hand ni will be our cathode in a galvanic cell the anode is negative and the cathode is positive even though current flows from positive to negative electrons flow from negative to positive so that is the direction of flow of electrons mn to n i 8.2.3 we're supposed to calculate the initial emf of the cell so let's go ahead and do that the initial emf of the cell will be equals to the reduction potential at the cathode minus the reduction potential at the anode at the cathode we have n i with a reduction potential of minus 0 0.27 minus the reduction potential at the anode where we have mn that is minus 1.18 if you put that in your calculator you should get 0 0.91 volts this is uh, quite an easy one right 8.2.4 rather than the balanced equation for the net reaction taking place Let's start with the anode where oxidation takes place. At the anode, we have Mn. So we're going to have Mn losing two electrons to form Mn2 plus plus two electrons. And then at the cathode, we have Ni2 plus plus two electrons to give us Ni. It is easy to see that in equation one, we have a loss of electrons. And in equation two, we have a gaining of electrons. So in order to find the net cell reaction, we add the left-hand sides of the two equations and the right-hand sides of the two equations. But what we can do, we can ignore the electrons. We have two electrons on the left and the two electrons on the right. They're just spectators. We're going to ultimately have, so we're adding Mn and Nn2+. So we're going to have Mn, plus Ni2 plus to give us Mn2 plus plus Ni. So Mn2 plus plus Ni. This is the net cell reaction. 8.2.5.
the concentration of Ni to the 2 plus is now increased. Will the reading of the voltmeter increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, let's go ahead and make sense of this one. Uh, the initial EMF of the cell is given by the reduction potential at the cathode minus the reduction potential at the anode. We have an increase of Ni2 plus, the concentration at the cathode. So if you increase the concentration at the cathode, then this reduction potential is going to increase. If the reduction potential increases, it is easy to see that the reading on the voltmeter will also increase. But let's say, for instance, uh, it was the concentration of Mn2 plus that was increased. Then the, the reduction potential at the anode would increase. And if the reduction potential at the anode is increasing, the reading on the voltmeter would decrease. But in our case, the reading on the voltmeter is increasing.